Give me the definition marketing was, marketing is. <laughs> marketing was spending a boatload of money on advertising. Marketing is now understanding your buyers really well, creating the content that will reach them and engaging with them in real time. That's how most people answer questions. One person requests information and the other person responds with that information. Pretty simple, right? Well, apparently not for politicians. Hey, I'm David Merriman Scott, co-author of the book Fanocracy, turning fans into customers and customers into fans. And if you're a Tony Robbins fan, you'll enjoy the forward he wrote for my book. We're in the middle of the 2020 presidential campaign cycle. Candidates are trying to generate votes and they are being asked a lot of questions. However, many candidates aren't actually engaging with voters. They're sticking to focus group tested advertising messages instead of simply answering the questions. I went on the campaign trail and attended more than 20 New Hampshire 2020 Democratic candidate events in order to ask the candidates one simple question they never get asked. Outside of your work and your family, what what are you a fan of? Yes, so, um, um, uh, um, uh. While this seems like a very simple question, it requires honesty, a little introspection, and most importantly, the ability to think on their feet in order to share their passion for the things they love without resorting to talking points. By asking somebody what they're a fan of, it allows us to get to the essence of who they are as people. Ironically, politicians generally don't want you to know who they are as people. They want you to know who they are as politicians. They even created a certain way of speaking, which is often referred to as the presidential voice. You don't have the presidential voice. The presidential voice? And while the presidential voice was originally meant to inspire confidence amongst voters, it often has the opposite effect, since no one really talks like that. Stay cool. Hot one out there today. Thank you, Congressman. He's a robot. Simply put, people want relatability, and they want to know that the candidate is passionate about something. By the way, I was able to ask my question to every single Democratic candidate at every single town hall meeting I went to. This wasn't by luck, there's a science to it. When it was time for the Q&A, I was sure to raise my hand first and make direct eye contact with the candidate. It's a bit intense, but it works. I should mention that I also went to a Donald Trump rally that drew over 10,000 of his supporters. However, the president didn't take any questions, so I wasn't able to ask him what he's a fan of. Let's start with Bernie Sanders. Outside of your work and outside of your family, what are you a fan of? What do you do on your off time? Note that Bernie isn't making eye contact with me. He's really thinking about my question and I caught him off guard. The first thing he says is this. Off time, did you say? <laughs> it was funny and off the cuff and addressed the throwaway last part of my question. But when he went on to answer, what are you a fan of, he pivoted. I think what the joy in my life is that and keeps me vaguely sane. And that is my seven beautiful grandchildren. Which I expressly stated I didn't want to hear. Since anyone can talk about their love for their family, it's not unique, and let's face it, most kids are pretty cute. And when you look at Bernie's face, he's not smiling. He's back in politician mode, even when he's talking about his grandkids. Sanders used a classic pivot, a tactic used constantly in politics in order to change the subject to a predetermined talking point. What are you most passionate about outside of work and family? What I'm most passionate about, and I really mean it, is doing something about the abuse of power. There it is, the pivot. Biden changed the subject to one of his main campaign points. Always be campaigning. Always be campaigning. And while some candidates did try to fit the question into their talking points, others cherished the opportunity to discuss the things that they're a fan of. Here's Tulsi Gabbard. Thank you for asking that. You know, growing up in Hawaii, the ocean was our playground. When I first learned how to swim, it was in the ocean. Look at the smile on her face. And at a deeply personal level, I try to get into the ocean as much as possible because it's magic, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tulsi goes full Jeff Bridges. Biodigital jazz, man. Here's Kamala Harris. What are you a fan of? Oh, that's a great question. I love music. My father, when I was a child, had an extensive jazz collection, and I remember just going to sleep to 
Miles and, and Coltrane. I am particularly fond of Bob Marley. Kamala was so excited to talk about her love of Bob Marley that she even continued our conversation after the main event. The only time I saw him live was at the Greek Theater at UC Berkeley, and I'll never forget just being mesmerized. And did you notice that Kamala was smiling the entire time? I think it's because she is so passionate about what she's a fan of. Next, we have Pete Buttigieg. What are you passionate about besides your family and besides your work? We're kind of returning to Gershwin right now. Music, I'm on a Gershwin kick. Wow, Gershwin. I didn't see that one coming. Mayor Pete is an authentic and passionate candidate. Maybe that's why he has so many fans. I got to play Friend of the Devil with Bob Weir. I love going to country music concerts. I'm nice. a country music uh, Democrat. <laughs> I don't know if there are many of us. I was following Jeremy Lin's career, and I still am, so I guess, <laughs> I guess this time I'm just going to follow the Raptors in the playoffs. I'm passionate about where I live. Do you like to ski? I love to read. I'm reading uh, two books right now. Um, one is this great history of the Osage in Oklahoma, Killers of, of the Flower Moon. The other is um, Uninhabitable Earth, uh, which really just details um, what we're doing to this planet right now and some of the consequences. And finally, Elizabeth Warren. Let's see how she answers my question. I know you call it my work, but it's teaching. It's the part where you, you know something and you're trying to think how you get it across to somebody else. And when it happens, it's like you watch somebody go Pah. It's an incredibly intimate thing to do, to teach. I would spend my whole life teaching if I could. I'm, I'm terrible at everything else. <laughs> Completely unrehearsed, engaging, relatable, and most importantly, passionate. As we consider who to vote for in 2020, we can choose a candidate based on the issues, how they performed in the debates, or the messages in their advertising. However, how about also considering how passionate and relatable they are as people? Some candidates, like Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, are like traditional advertisers, sticking to pre-approved messages. Others, like Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren, are passionate and engaging and as a result are building fans. We know more about politicians now than ever before. We're starting to get some real insights into how they tick and how they talk. Thanks so much for watching. For much more on building passionate fans, hit that subscribe button. And consider ordering Fanocracy, turning fans into customers and customers into fans, which is available in hardcover, ebook, and audiobook formats.